Hello? Hi. Hi, I, this is maybe the fourth time I'm trying to launch the streaming without any success. I have a problem with, uh, I don't know if it's uh, with Stream Labs, with YouTube or something. But uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to follow with the streaming because Anyway, I'm going to try to avoid think about it. I'm going to stay focusing on working. Let's hope that everything will work. I removed the music because maybe it was the music. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, let's see. going to keep working on, on this trying to be concentrated about what I'm doing so I'm gonna follow working on this because yesterday I wasn't able to make my pixel logic uh, C++ life streaming you know we there were there was an event with Maxon, Paul was streaming, talking about the connection of Cinema 4D and Zebra. So they had programmed that event, and maybe next week they're going to have another event. So I'm not going to be able to stream as well next week. So that's the reason why I decide to start making some progress on this design. So I will work a little bit on it. So this is the the head. I'm gonna start refining the head. I'm gonna make the mirror well to make it to make it symmetrical. Not that much. I'm going to Pull it to the right a little bit, no, pull it to the left. This is going to be the head. I'm going to start working on the, the definitive head. Uh, yes, let's see, Factor, if everything is working fine now. Desconecté la música, por si acaso era el problema de la música, no lo sé. No lo sé. Pero me estaba volviendo un poco loco. Yes. Esta es la última vez que lo intento. This is going to be the last time that I try to keep going with this live because I don't know why things are not working. Because I used to use another software, a streaming software, with uh, on my Pixel Logic streamings. I use OBS and now I'm using Streamlabs. And uh, I don't know what it is not working. So without music. Okay, so let's go with the head. So I'm going to start with uh, detailing and sculpting the head. So as I need more topology and another resolution, maybe it's going to be good to use a sculptrice pro to start creating new new polygons or new topology because going to uh, dynamics is not going to be a good idea because i still want to keep the jaw and the cranius as a separated uh, parts not uh, welded together so maybe i'm gonna start using the move grass i'm using the symmetry no. Maybe I'm gonna because I am using this symmetry in Z, so a little bit better to because if I turn on the X now, you can see I have the X on the nose and on the neck, so a little bit better to rotate the head 90 degrees in this direction. So I'm gonna be able to use now the default symmetry. Let's send it to the center, and now I'm gonna let's mirror and weld not on this axis, on the X axis. And now I can uh, 
Ooh, 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 ooh. No, I can't. No, I can't. I can't. I can't. What are, what are I doing? So here, yeah, so here I am. So now I can work on the head. Symmetrical. So let's start working on something similar that the head that we are having. Something like this, making the, the shape of the cranius, the shape of the jaw, like this. Maybe the head, the mouth is a little bit more rounded, like this. This is more straight, and that's it. I'm gonna pull, push this in to make the eye sockets. And uh, let's see, I'm going to insert two primitives as, as eyeballs. Oop, like there. So I can lift them there. So I'm going to squeeze the eyeball a little bit like this. this and for the eyelids I'm gonna use this the curved tube snap brush hey Alan how you doing I'm doing well so here I am again trying to make my fourth try of the streaming because I was having problems to launch my streaming since six I have been fighting with the stream labs with the stream labs about one hour and at last, maybe now I'm gonna be able to work and to start streaming. Hola Fernando, ¿qué tal? Aquí eh, hoy el canal no, el, el 3D Team creo que está en otro lugar. Vamos a hacer los párpados así. So, tenemos los párpados. We have the eyelids. So let's put them in place. As you are, you can see, I prefer to make the eyelids as a separate pieces instead of sculpt them. So that's the reason why I placed the these uh, little tubes. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, but now you you are here already. Yeah, <laughs> let's rock. <laughs> yeah, today at last I'm able to to work on it. So that's the, the reason why I'm here now, sculpting and making this progress on a live session is for just to get it uh, recorded for the people of my next uh, Zebra's live streamings. Because if anyone is interested about the progress that I'm going to do today so they can go to my YouTube channel and start reviewing the the, the videos that I'm going to record today and next uh, Thursday because next Wednesday Pixelogic is going to have another event program at the same hour like mine so I decided to to change, to leave uh, the space for them, of course, and uh, I'm gonna be streaming on my own channel. So this is what I have. Okay, so let's start detailing I'm gonna make a folder just for the head new folder this is going to be the head folder because I am creating the the master file for the head so that's the reason why you can see I am using this is the original position of the head I'm gonna turn on all of the subtools 
to keep them visible so this is what I'm doing you can see here that this is the original position and now I am using a completely different head as a master file so once I have this uh, head completed completed detail I'm gonna put it on place based on the original design position so that's the reason why I I'm gonna keep it as separated as an individual folder. You have a lot of questions about the Julian sculpting. Perfect. Now this is the moment to start asking. <laughs> yeah, this is so cool. Thank you. I'm really interested in doing that, but I don't know where should I should you should you start. But then maybe the answer could be depending on the kind of design that you would like to make. Maybe you should start from one point or another. Maybe I can give you my point of view about uh, which is the best choice or the best starting point or the more recommended. Because when I'm saying things like this, this look can sound like I have the, the knowledge about everything or about which is going to be the best way to start or, or the best approach to make something but is I I just being here talking based from my experience that doesn't mean that, that I am saying 100% uh, which is the best way of working but uh, I can I will be glad of helped you now I'm using the uh, Sculptis Pro here to start modifying groups, the topology, what I did, undo, undo, smooth. I'm gonna start adding material. You can see I'm start adding and carving material. I'm gonna now I have only one poly group. I'm gonna use the auto groups option. And uh, I'm gonna use the mirror and well to have the same polygroups at both sides. So now I can control and tap here. So I'm gonna be able to mask the other parts to don't avoid to don't affect them when I am sculpting. Gracias, Exter. Gracias. Gracias, porque yo creo que lo he compartido tres o cuatro veces. La gente se tiene que estar volviendo loca. Sí, con todos los enlaces que he puesto. So maybe the nose trills, maybe can be something like this. Gracias a ti, Riz Benavides. Un saludo, un saludo. Encantado de compartir aquí el conocimiento o mi forma de trabajar o como lo quieras ver, pero encantado de estar aquí compartiéndolo con vosotros. Uh, you show who do you get to clients? Do you work for a company or yourself? I am a freelance. I work by for myself. So I'm a freelance artist. I know you are a professional and clients are probably calling you. Yeah, but for amateur, what do you suggest? I was an amateur. Not, not, not uh, so far. Maybe around uh, seven years ago I started as an amateur uh, uh, digital sculptor so what you have to do is, is start making your portfolio or your the place start building the place where you can show your work to the rest of the world and depending on the kind of clients that you want to reach, if we are talking about jewelry design, maybe, of course, you should be start posting works about jewelry design and you should start posting your job on the, the right places. I mean, for example, if we are talking about Facebook, you should be start posting your work on uh, jewelry related uh, groups. So just, uh, just uh, I think it's going to is the best way to show your work. So just post it there. So leave your the link 
to your social media or to your website if anyone is interested in your work can reach you I can ask you about how much you charge to sculpt something or to design something and this is going to be the first step to start growing your career as a as a professional so any professional career starts from from a from a job so and so once you grab the first job and you are going to be as more professional as possible and you are going to offer as more quality as possible so i sh i'm sure that the second year the, the second job will come and the third fourth and and so on so it's just a matter of being as more professional as possible and an offer as best quality as possible and when we are talking about quality maybe we are talking about maybe we are talking about uh, offer another way or another style it's not necessary to try to match the quality of the others because you never know what a client wants maybe they don't want to pay the same amount or the money that the other artists or other professional charge for make one job if you're gonna be able to make it cheaper with same quality or or enough quality for of your for your client it's going to be enough it's not going to be necessary to to have a high quality level or I, I don't I, I'm I hope I am you are understanding what I what I mean so I'm gonna as here you can see I'm just uh, blocking the the shapes as the original form the original idea is not to make a very realistic anatomy of the animal because it looks like it could be a mythological animal and it could be made many centuries ago so it is not complete it's not going to be completely necessary to make an exact replica I'm just trying to grab the the concept this and we can have a beautiful nice head not too aggressive so let's follow working on the head like this this you can see with the sculptors pro you are gonna be able to I'm gonna say this to be the progress number two <clears throat> and uh, uh, let's see what I can do is hide this let's make a mask for this portion And now we can play with this a little bit more to put it more ang angry, but not too much. With the Scottish Pro it's very useful because you are just focused about the what you are sculpting at this point i don't care about i'm not worried about the topology how the topo how clean the topology is or how regular is i'm just focused about if i am getting the right shapes and the right forms 
stretch like this let's go with the jaw now like it has something like a lip here side it works from the top Maybe we can oops let's grab this one to start adding here a kind of a step it has here and uh, I'm gonna refine this form has on the top and it has this kind of a scales or something like a scales on the top of the head and it has one two three four and I have three okay let's make them shorter for example one here and another one here another one here <laughs> And the last one here. Like this. Let's modify the shape of them. This should be higher. Like this. And what I can do is I'm gonna make a mask here. a mask here as well so I'm gonna push this down because here we are gonna need to connect this part with the neck Uh, one more question. Okay, I'll answer as quickly as I can. How do you calculate how much clients should pay for designing? Well, this is a yeah complicated question for to answer. It, I think that the price should be based on the time that you are going to need to complete the work, and the, the, then the question is how do I know how many time I'm going to need to make the work but the answer is uh, based on your experience so once you start working making different designs different kind of designs or different kind of uh, styles or, or 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 projects you're gonna start knowing your rates or how many time you should put to finish for example one ring or one kind of pendant or uh, relief or something so you're gonna start making your own prices uh, and that's it because the prices changes a lot depending on the country or the part of the world 
so it's not the same making a, a commission for a person who is on, in the United States or in Europe than a person who is in, uh, in China, for example, or another or maybe South America or another country. So maybe, so the, the, the industries are completely different. I'm talking about the dual industries, right? So, so then you're gonna start learning that based from your experience. So, and you're gonna start learning how to charge to different clients, to different jobs. But the, the work doesn't matter, it's that it is from for, for one country or another country, it's going to take the same amount of time to complete. But uh, try to don't put your prices too low, too low because if not, uh, it's going to be very difficult to increase in the future. When you start thinking that uh, you are good enough to start charging more, that's going to be a problem. So it's much better to try to have, to find a good balance from to above, not putting the prices too loud. So then will be, that will be the best option. But calculate your, your time. Maybe you can put a ratio, maybe you can an average about, uh, if we are talking about euros, if you are in Europe, Maybe you can start calculating maybe around 30 euros per hour as a starting point. Hey, Dara, how are you doing? Welcome. What do you mean with two or three X materials? And then, yeah, hourly labor, yeah, that's going to be the best way to calculate your rates. But I, in this is going to be the first, the first, I think, my opinion, the first the step to take. But in my opinion, it's much better to start calculating the prices based on the uh, design complexity instead of the time that you can estimate to a sculpt anything. So it's not the same to make a full body figure than a bust, for example, or it's not the same to make a portrait of a person who that is very, in my opinion, it's very difficult because it takes a lot of time to complete a, a good likeness, but uh, it's much better to, to calculate the rate based on the design complexity. Of course, the design complexity is directly linked with the amount of time that you should put to complete the work. But at the at the at the end, we will arrive at the same point. So about uh, your experience. So once you start grabbing experience, sculpting different elements on different designs, you're gonna start building your rates or your way or make your quotations. Um, making a ring with your hand, then processing. Yeah, but I think that we are just talking about the, the modeling or the sculpting process. I don't know. So what the, or you are saying, you are talking about to calculating an estimate for the whole process for the for the physical piece till the beginning till the design and the sculpting process till the manufacturing and so on yeah that yeah that's the key that's a good point don't undersell yourself yeah that's the reason why I start start thinking about reach your prices. Yeah, you have to calculate everything. Yeah, that may, that's my problem because I'm just 
on the I'm just on the digital part of the process but of course if you have to uh, start calculating an estimate for the whole process for the physical piece so you're gonna you're gonna need to have to to make a lot of calculation about the different kind of materials times of processing uh, many many um, energy consumed by the machines that you're going to use that it's going to be crazy it's going to be completely different so we are just talking about time sculpting sculpting on modeling time or even designing time because when the clients are coming to you with an idea but the idea is not very very clear it's an open idea where you should be developing the design at the same time that you are creating the design that's it that it's going to take them much more time than just uh, grabbing having a picture and trying to copy what you have on the picture so this is another point that you should uh, take into account of uh, when you are calculating the price so if the, if the design is open for changes or modifications so you should think about uh, that time as well not only how complex the, the sculpting or the design process is going to be but uh, why do you need why do you need the keyboard sort function in the recording because with you are you are used to work with zebras you are just always using the same sort of cuts so shift alt control so so i am not using any i'm not using any other uh extreme sort of cuts or i think the eye is too too big maybe But I will consider it on my my future streaming because, but I don't consider that don't consider that it is a useful information. The shortcuts because now and I'm using just a shift key to block the view, and that's it, and nothing, nothing more. So shift key now shift shift to start blocking the view front side and front using the shift and the alt for panning or zoom out or zoom in which are the default um, uh, zebra shortcuts for navigation so let's go with the sculptress pro again and I think now I'm gonna split the I'm gonna split the cranius I'm gonna split hidden I'm gonna use the jaw now this is good I'm gonna split the jaw from the eyes split the hidden now we have now I have the eyes the jaw on the on the head or the cranius because I'm gonna start creating a dynamis only for the cranius because I'm gonna start refining the shapes maybe the, the head is too long compare if I watch the the distance between the eyelid the the eye and the nose maybe mine is too long and then the jaw should be a little bit shorter now like this and maybe we can adjust it like this and now if I am going to split the eyes for the, from the eyelids as well so and I and I have almost everything split it into parts so when client wants you to make design for more materials you must take off some parts because of the weights mm. I'm not sure if I understand your question so when client wants you to make design for more materials for more material material you are saying that for example it's very common in jewelry when we are thinking about to manufacture the piece into with the different kind of metals we are talking about gold maybe 
they are very uh, beautiful and we are using different uh, gold colors yellow co yellow co yellow gold white gold or rose gold in combination to try to combine uh, with different uh, colors and and finishing in that case during the designing process we should have that in mind because at any point we're going we are, we are going to need to split the necessary part and start thinking about an assembling system between each other in that case this is going to be one part of the question but another part of the question is going to be we are creating for example in this case we are thinking about to manufacture this piece in gold the first decision to take is how big it's going to be then the answer is going to be as smaller as possible so once we decide which is the the smaller size the next step to take is we're going to make it as thin as possible to try to save as more material as more gold as possible so during the designing process and the sculpting process we should have that in mind and if we are making this in silver we are not be so worried about it as as, uh, as with gold but uh, uh, we are going to be worried more than don't make a very heavy piece very hard to wear on your jacket because it's going to be complicated to wear or on your finger if we are talking about the ring so it's going to be part of the designing process of the jewelry uh, designing process but uh, at the end of the process we are going to take care about it try to make things hollow on the back or as thin as possible but now we are i'm just focused about the shapes and forms but that at some point it's going to be necessary to take that kind of decision yeah yes kitko is going to be very for example if we you should at any point we want to know how heavy one piece is you can you have this as Darren says said we can go to the kitko metal quotes and we can weight the piece the whole piece or a single part of the of the design to know how weight it is sorry we could click here now this is a very common error that the zebras can give to you that means that the the sub tool i'm using the head now i am trying to to find the weight it is not a watertight mess that means the mess is not completely closed this is very common when you are using a sculptist pro but uh, normally it's very easy to fix just closing the holes and that's it so it is not very difficult to fix so now if we are reading here an 18 case carat gold now the weight of just this piece of the the the, the design is 1.1 gram but again at this point it hasn't sense to start knowing the weight of so small pieces but at the end of the process it's going to be necessary to to know how weight it is and how much material we can remove as an average to make the piece as lighter as possible it is scary what is scary <laughs> yeah been yeah been 24 carats yes yeah in gold solid pieces or hollow inside i guess yeah all pieces were still cut down and hollow it yeah of course and even if even hollow I suppose that they are going to be heavy, so they are going to be expensive. <laughs> okay, so now we are here. I, I like the shape of the head. I like the more of the shape, the shape of the head. I like it. So again, I can use this starting point to start refining the shapes. One point five millimeter wall thickness you mean or 1.5 because you are not saying 1.5 millimeter high pieces because if not they are too small you are talking about the wall thicknesses right yes but in my opinion 1.5 millimeter thickness for gold is very thick 
to thick the clients when uh, when I'm creating commissions that they are going to be cast in gold. Most of the client request uh, below 0.8 millimeter thickness wall thicknesses. Till in some cases 0.6 millimeter. So we, we are talking about gold pieces or gold designs. We are when you, we try to hollow them out and trying to get that a small. Uh, as thin as possible walls, uh, based from my experience, we are talking about 0 0.6, 0 0.7, or 0 0.8 millimeter. So when I am when I'm making things in silver, 1.5 millimeter, it has sense. But with gold, yeah, he asked for weighty pieces. Okay, so no problem. I guess that the client knows how many. How much money they are going to he's going to spend if he wants gold pieces gold heavy pieces how can i measure thickness i use this application i'm gonna i'm gonna make a test for example for example let's make a boolean for this piece uh, i'm gonna get into this gear boolean folder and now here I have the, the head completely with all the elements uh, soldered or welded together to know if I am using only one piece. So what I do is auto groups, control shift, click and drag. If I drag and nothing happens, that means that I am all, uh, Cbros only recognized only one surface, only one. And this is, I'm gonna go to the scale master, set the scene. There is just only the head is 5.2 by 6.4 by 8.3 millimeter. If we are saying 8.3 millimeter, that means this is the on the Z axis. The Z axis, it means from the bottom part of the head till the nose, more or less. So I'm gonna, it is. It has very low amount of polymer. I'm gonna export it. Export. In o I used to use OBJ format when I export files from CBrush to another to a, an external uh, application software. So uh, let's say this is going to be the head head for testing testing head testing head OBJ. What I use for hollowing things out, so I use this. Uh, this is a free software called Where Are You Mass Mixer? Mass Mixer? Nah, don't waste it. I don't, I don't mind. So, this is a very, it has a very simple interface. Click on import. Let's testing head. So, here I have the head. So let's go to edit, hollow, and now by default it has uh, offset distance means a wall thickness. It is the default setting is two millimeter, so it's too thick for the size of the head. So maybe we can go to 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and solid accuracy and mass density. Solid accuracy is how how precise mesh mixer is going to curve in the inside and on the on the cavity and mesh density is like we are talking about the, the the amount of polygons so maybe you can put both of them at its maximum value to have a more precise hollowing so update hollow of course as more but uh, as a higher value you put here will take more time for calculate maybe wasn't a good idea to put them all together at its their maximum value because it looks like it's going to take a lot of time uh, you hollow them in this mixture yeah this mixture is this perfect no 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 something went wrong or maybe let's see uh, 
Let's close it. Let's just start again. And there's testing head, so maybe hollow uh, point eight. And uh, let's stay in the middle, more or less. Let's see. Update hollow. It normally works, but maybe maybe we are having a mess issue here because it's not normal. The the software freezes. Okay, it is now. It it just starts calculating the the offset. Okay, looks like it is working now. And the way I have to calculate the 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 wall thickness as you answer, uh, I have two ways. I have the the precise way, and I have the 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 non precise way. So now here you are watching what the Ms. Music did. It it makes it made um, internal shell or internal object. That means that the offset between the external wall and the internal wall now it is 0.8 millimeter. If we can say 0.6 update hello Math Mixer will will uh, make a different offset for the internal cell. But uh, when we are talking about jewelry, depending on the kind of jewelry that you are, you are making, as we were talking about before, if you are making a gold piece or you are, you are making a silver piece, you need a more precise way to calculate which is the, what is the, the wall thickness. I use another external application. Now I click on accept. And I'm gonna export it back to Seabrooks. Export. I'm gonna overwrite. This is the previous file. Now the head is hollow inside. But in what I do is in uh, in Seabrooks, I make the hole, the hole, the opening hole. So I import it. How do I make the opening hole? But for example, I can insert a cylinder here. Let, let's make it longer. Let's put it inside. Let's just split mass point, and this should be underneath. So negative. And now you can see I am creating a hollow piece. I'm going to create the boolean mess. This is the boolean mess. So the way that I have now to control the wall thickness, this is going to be the non-precise way of measure it. What I do is I select the one portion. You should turn on the double here to be able to see the offset. And now with the transpose line, you can, for example, you can grab one portion, for example, this area, turn it on this icon. You're going to be able to take measurements from point to point, from this point to this point. Now we are having, you can read it here on the top left corner, 0.6 millimeter thickness. So you can see from here to here, 0.6. It's okay. For from here to here, 0.6. But it, and when you are taking measurements from point to point, it's very important to keep the shift key of your keyboard pressed when you are dragging the line to know that you are making a 100% a straight line from point to point. And now, for example, of course, this here is going to be a little bit thicker. Now here we are having 0.9 millimeter. But it is, I think it's not going to affect the overall weights. So this is going to be the, I'm going to export this. Export, testing head, hollow. This is going to be the hollow piece. You work in 3D Max, it crashes very often. And why does it crash? Maybe maybe we, we, you are sending too heavy uh, CBRUS files. 
and another external application another free external application I have for measuring is this one this netpap you can install the free the basic uh, version of the software that is for free and then what I do is let me make this smaller. I use just this software just for mass testing and for taking measurements so the, it has a lot of features but I don't know what they do so opening the the, the, the file and the, in this case is very handy because if you click here on this ruler here we have different ways to take measurements and one of them is control the thickness just keep clicking here and click now here I have 1.4 millimeter and for example here I have 1.6 now here I have 1.6 millimeter now this is a bad remove maybe I can take a measurement here now I have 0.6 now I have an I 0.6 here on the top 0.6 just clicking on the surface 0 0.6 0 0.6 0 0.6 now that I can check that as an average uh, hollowing is it it is it is okay so and that's it maybe the problem was with the streaming problems was with the music with the with the copyright I don't know you're welcome you're welcome my pleasure yeah to just to show you and I remove this and God, I don't want to get this beat and delete I'm going to follow working on the head. Like this, for example. Mm -hmm -hmm. Maybe I can say I can match more or less here. This is the position of the original. We have something quite similar. Maybe now it's time to. I'm gonna bend this kind of ears or horns or something I use the transpose line with the alt key to whoop, to bend things I'm a big fan of the transpose line in combination with the alt key you can see how many things you can do good without you here this is what you can do without the alt and this is what you can do with the alt and then, 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 then. So let's follow making this and now maybe it's going to be time to go from the current mess we have it is I'm gonna curve here a little bit more like this this, like this, and uh, I'm going to go for the dynamesh. Yeah, the alt key it's very you have a very powerful tool you use the, the transpose with the alt key for example you want to bend the jaw now we are I am a move mode you can grab you start dragging the line from left to right and now using this modifier the internal red circle with the alt key you can start making this kind of bendings or you can do this you're gonna start dragging the line now for example from this point 
to this point and instead of using this red you can grab the white in the middle with the alt key again and then you can start making things like this to start modifying the, the, uh, the curves or the flow of the curves Texture. There is a way to make a mirror from a mask already done. Hmm? Mm, 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 I don't know. As far as I know, I never need it. You mean you have, for example, you have the the asymmetry turned off and you paint here a mask and you want to translate this mask to this another side I don't know you make a very complex questions very difficult question let's go to the masking menu let's see mirror by pose symmetry I don't know maybe there is a way to do it but I never Need it. Boost my blah, 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 blah. No, this is for another proposes mass by drag. No, I don't know. Maybe here the best way to remove, turn the symmetry on, and now paint your mask with symmetrical. I don't know. Maybe there is a way, but I don't know. I don't know. Let's start adding so we can like this. So now we can go to Dynamis. I go to Blick to look in Dynamis Utility. Now to start refining the shapes, maybe one million is going to be enough. I like to remove the blur. So now I'm getting more than one million, maybe one million and almost one million and a half. So, okay, it's going to be okay anyway. I'm going to polish the surface to start getting a smoother surface. Now I don't need the sculptures or with the smooth peaks. I'm going to start smoothing things. And I'm going to start, maybe I'm going to start subdividing this. It has a sense to use Dynamics just for the eyelids, maybe. Will be better to use the subdivisions. You, we can make a series measure to clean the mask. So let's divide, and now we can start. And now we can use the move with the back face to start make them thicker. And okay. Same for the eyes. Make the series measure. Divide one two times. Like this, going to be okay. Let's grab the edge polish to start making the pupil. Well, it looks like the eyeball is not very rounded, so let's fix it. Yeah, something like this. At the moment, it's going to be enough, and let's. Let's start refining the shapes of the head. Cuando no piensas en el futuro, sí. Estoy estancado. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start making planes. I prefer to before I start sculpting anything I prefer to find the planes first for example this part looks like it is more concave like this This part is going to be almost hidden, but anyway, I'm going to try to, to detail it. Let's follow making planes here. And 
this is so we should remove this corner here is like a, you are using a sandpaper but that's the reason why I, I thought that one million will be enough because yeah, if we are getting we are having one million and a half looks like the material it's very hard so it's very difficult to smooth so at uh, we are at this point it's going to be better to use less polygons if I go to dynamics we are currently using 236 resolution let's go to a little bit lower no, it's a little bit more 200 now 1 million maybe let's stay below 1 million so let's say 188 okay like this so I think will be easier to handle to less polygons because we, we are still trying to remove uh, artifacts on the surface or imperfections on the surface is not a good idea to go directly to a very big amount of polygons because if not it's going to be very difficult to to smooth the surface so let's fix this I have a nice shapes here so let's change the outline some stepping here like this and now let's refine it with Thanks, Alan. Glad you like it. Yeah, it takes time, but this and maybe here I'm gonna use the clay build up. Just uh, my keyboard is dead. No. Mm -hmm. Let's make this like this. Need a smooth valleys to smooth peaks. Smooth valleys. So let's uh, add some more interesting forms here. Let's add another bridge, another fault here. Gonna I think it's not going to have any any tip. Maybe for the this here, this light brush is going to be very useful. B S for slide. Maybe this 
this curve is a little bit boring. Let's break it like this. Have to hit, save us. And uh, and let's go with the job the same as before. We said that uh, we already have one twenty-eight. And let's make dynamics with this resolution. With this resolution, we are getting below half of a million. But it's going to be too. too Poor resolution. Let's go to 2028, 2032. No, okay. Let's polish it. And now let's just start grabbing the file tool or the sanding tool and start making the planes. And here we have one. Here we have another. Another one. And maybe we here we have a kind of lip. If I grab this first, let's see how it works. And if I add like a little tube here, here. We can use this. I split my points. I like to make it as more straight as possible. Make it a like this. And now with the back face. Through the connection, no, not yet. I didn't. Uh, if not, I would like to recommend it. I think. Did, really? Do you think it is? It is useful with ZBrush. I didn't find it useful because uh, normally when I'm working with ZBrush, you are using the pen with the tablet with the Cintiq. You are sculpting on the surface on the on the on the screen surface, and now you are using the, the left hand. Or the shortcuts on the keyboard. Do you mean that you change the keyboard to the space mouse? Because when you are navigating, when you are rotating, you are just using the right click on your pen. So it's much more simple than trying to control the piece. I don't know. I, I have tried once, but I didn't like it. Yeah, it, it is cool to use it, but I don't find it useful compared with the default uh, pen and, uh, and mouse combination. Mm. 
maybe we can, for example, if I want to make a straight line here. And at the end it has a kind of hair or something here. Maybe I can do something like this here. I should know how it works on the on the body, but by the moment, I think teeth. I'm not sure that it is going to have a, a kind of teeth. Maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna try. Maybe I can try something like a very simple uh, teeth form because you should think about the final size so the teeth they are going to be almost invisible or very very tiny uh, so with something like this and uh, for example, like this, it's going to be, I think, more than enough to have the feeling that uh, the inside of the mouth is not completely empty. So I can use this. But it, in my opinion, in this kind of design, has in sense to sculpt a real, realistic or group of, uh, of teeth maybe with this I think will be more than will be enough I think depending on the size if we are we were making a much bigger uh, piece maybe will have sense even with the tongue I'm gonna and a kind of tongue because here it is too dark to see if we the design of has tongue or not but I'm gonna grab a piece and a sphere I'm gonna put it inside of the mouth symmetry in the center a split mass point let's squeeze it make it bigger like this and I'm going to add something and I'm gonna use the same method as before with the transpose line Y here I'm gonna bend the end of the tongue like this to try to get get a mesh shape now with the back face let's make it thicker this let's make it bigger in the base and now we have tongue not that visible like this okay It's not going to be necessary to have this detail that I'm going to make, but it looks better <laughs> with it. Okay, so like this, maybe we can... This part of the head should be a little bit more pointy in the center, like this. Maybe it 
is a little bit more flat flatter there and we can add things like this yeah bending but i love the bending option i'm gonna use i i it you can use the bending option for many things for the feathers for the curves you know that you have another way to do it because you go but i still prefer the old-fashioned way to do it with the transpose line you can use the gizmo and you can use this feature inside of the gizmo the first the first decision is try to select the right orientation for the gizmo and you can use this bend curve option where you can add more control po points you can start bending things then you can achieve very cool results with this option too but in my opinion this way takes more time for the set to set it up to to place the gizmo adjust the control point and start moving the control points uh, i feel that with the transpose line it's just dragging the transpose line and start moving her, uh, uh, the things around so it's faster Okay, I think it's going to be enough. Let's add this tiny details that we have here. For this option, it's going to be very useful. This feature inside of the stroke palette. Uh, it was what it was here. The interpolate. Let's see if it works. But sometimes it doesn't work for me. So I'm gonna create one line here. Let's make it more intensity. I'm gonna store the more target first so let's uh, not that much this so let's add more lazy radius one line here and another one here and now you can interpolate come on yeah too much because we are using 10 strokes if we go from 10 to 3 yeah, we are having a very clean way to make parallel lines, like a pattern, that it is. And the reason why I store the morph target first, because I can now I can grab the morph target, morph brush, and I can start remove the part of the line that I don't want to keep. The beginning, for example, this one should be shorter, like this. Uh, there you go. Yeah, the the um, uh, interpolate. Yeah, it's very useful in some cases. The only thing that you should note about the interpolate, zebras calculate the the interpolation based on the camera angle so maybe that's the reason why in some cases doesn't work properly because you are moving the object or something i'm not sure but i think it's something related with the camera angle when you try to interpolate uh, the strokes and it doesn't work for example, let's say if we I can grab this one here and I'm gonna make a line here. Let's store the morph target again. Let's go to more target, delete store. So let's create one line here and another one here. Uh, and now if we come back to the interpolate, we can make this. Now it works. So let's say now instead of three, let's go to five. Now better. Now we can uh, just move bodies and start bed where I'm fading. The beginning. Let's go to more to try to remove this, and now we can do this. 
Hey, David, glad you like it. <laughs> Interpolate uh, feature is uh, we are going to be able to make different instances of the same stroke. It has a kind of hair here. We can make one, two, one another stroke here, another stroke here. And now we can grab the slide brush, this one. We can start sliding the endings. We can, I don't like the last one, like this, and like this. Uh, we have with alphas. Mm -hmm. What do you mean with with alphas? With uh, do you use the interpolate with with alphas? I think yes. Mm -hmm. Let me try. If I go to, for example. Mm -hmm where uh, let's make a test here at the bottom if i grab the standard uh, brass let's use the drag rectangle uh, with this for example and i place one alpha here let's move a string and another one here we can interpolate yeah it works mm -hmm. For example, you can put a row of um, dots or peaks. For example, you can uh, we can select this alpha more strength. We can put not this one, maybe this one better. One here, another one here, and we can interpolate to start making things like this. Of course, it works with alphas. This is the method that I was using for creating this kind of effect when you, uh, it's very common when you are, uh, it's a technique that I love, what you can achieve with it is the, I don't know, I don't find the word in, in, in English, when you say grabado, in Spanish when you are using a tool and you are cutting out the metal and you are drawing scrolls and ornaments on a surface it's very common to see it on guns and things like that and on, on rings of course and you can achieve something similar if you use this brush let me find it it was it is one of the latest brushes they added I think I'm not sure if it was the chisel or I don't remember now I was using it, no, uh, no, the strip profile, no, not this one. This is the, 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 the cloth. It was the cloth pen or cloth chisel, maybe the chisel brushes. Chisel, chisel, chisel. Clip cloth. Cloth, cloth, uh, flat. <laughs> Uh, Stuart Flayden. Mm, it was maybe one of the curb brush. Chisel brush? Cloth? No. Mm -mm, let me see. If I, I, am, I think I already have an example of my YouTube channel. Let's, let's find it. Mm -mm, it was. Using the script chisel brushes, a, a, a scribble, yeah. This should be BS, a script, a scribe, a standard, this one, a scribe, a scribe chisel, this, this brush. I'm sorry, so you can 
make things like this. For example, let's try to make something more beautiful here. Or I don't know where. Maybe the, maybe here. You can make something like this. Another one here, and I start I start interpolating. So you can see here what I meant before. This is based on the camera angle. This is. You should I you should start now. The first step to take is try to fix which is the best camera angle, considering you are gonna create the stroke uh, ninety degrees from the surface. So it's not has any sense to start making the stroke this way. It will be better to to have a more to try to control the camera angle to try to make the stroke as more uh, ninety degrees against the surface. So we can I can do this one stroke here and another stroke here and now we can interpolate this the different strokes okay we can go from three so let's say two now it works better as you can see it's like you are uh, carving on the surface but I now I don't find the right word let me find it on the google translator so mm, should be easy but i don't remember it uh, engraving yeah yeah it was easy so this is metal engraving yeah Engraving, yeah, that's it. Engraving. <coughs> Sometimes my brain doesn't work in English. So when you are engraving the surface, this is the, the, the kind of finishing that you can achieve with this technique. It's very similar with this brushes, with the scribe chisel brush. Could be something similar here. So we can apply one stroke here. And the last one here, and now interpolate three. You can see they are very. What you can do, for example, if you don't like, you can feel that. Uh, you can see what happens with a camera angle. It would be better to start over. So let's put one here, and another one here. Now I interpolate. Now you can see that the they are too strong. What you can do is coming back for from history till the beginning. Here now, control tap here, coming back, and now you can adjust the last this one to start giving it less intensity. I prefer this finishing instead of the finish that I did before. So I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna make this flat again. I prefer how it looks like with the scribe chisel brush instead of the the brush I was using before. Okay, let's go again. So first select the camera angle as more frontal as possible now let's uh, create one stroke I'm gonna reduce the intensity even less no a little bit higher maybe I'm gonna use this one more strength get smaller brush more strength so it's going to be the first one and this is going to be the last one and interpolate and that's it I can clean the 
them. So with the smooth bodies, smoothing the, the beginning and the end. And that's it. Control, control tab. What do you mean with the control tab? Yeah, they are very cool brushes. They have a kind of engraving effect. Control tab or control tap? What do you mean? So I think it's gonna be okay. Where for the head on the history? Yeah, on the history. For example, let's see. I'm gonna make another example. If we, I go here. I'm gonna go clean build up. For example, I'm gonna start making some strokes here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. At any time, you can go back from history, grabbing this the small orange the square. So till the beginning of the first stroke we can we rewind here one more one more step so now we can control and tap here so now we are telling to see for us uh, we are recording in memory that point so the moment where we uh, started making a stroke so it's the same that the moment that when the surface was flat without any stroke now we can come back to the to the end of history and now we can play with this uh, control at just last that uh, it is here inside of the stroke now we can apply more intensity or less density now, even if we can apply a positive or negative value so this is a, a very good way to if you decide that the strokes you did looks uh, too smooth you can come back from history grab that uh, history point coming back to the latest uh, point and now you can start playing with the adjust last feature to start playing with this for example this is going to be very useful for many cases control tab on history it's a way to uh, store history points. Maybe that can be could be the the answer. The way to store uh, history points. Yeah, it could be. They, this is the. When we are the people like us, uh, that we are creating things for 3D printing, and most of the time we are always thinking about if the details that we are sculpting on the surface are going to be uh, depth enough for the printing and for the casting and for the polishing uh, processes. So that uh, you are sculpting anything and uh, you can feel that the strokes are not strong enough you can do this to so coming back from history store it coming back and apply more strength so for that uh, usage is very very useful I'm gonna create the pupil I'm gonna use this brush to form soft brush so I'm gonna Maybe the this mark here, and uh, here we have the kind of corner here, and another kind of corner here, like this.
Okay, I think that we already had the had almost finished it. here on the nose to start making like this and some imperfections here and maybe I can grab this Yeah. Also, you can do this with the transpose line. You can, instead of bending, it, because we were making the bending things with with the move um, option active, we can change from move to rotate. And if you replace this, if you press the R key, you're gonna start changing angles like this so can be very useful to what happens with with tongue let's see Down the mesh. Okay, maybe we can say that uh, the head is done. Maybe we can be making more, tweaking it a bit more. But, uh, you know, uh, Sager. And I'm going to uh, 